97.3 City FM, Relevant Radio, always. Hello and welcome to this edition of Politicals on City TV. My name is Umaru Sanda Amado. So this week, the president delivered a State of the Nation address that is seen by opponents as his last State of the Nation address as president. He thinks he still has four more years to go. We'll find out if he stands a chance. Also this week, Clotte Colley constituency. The NDC seems to be boiling. The MPP is also boiling. There's an impending primary this weekend in Clotte Colley on, on the side of the NPP. The NDC is also still struggling. We are not sure what exactly will be happening. We'll take you to the court and find out. Finally, teachers this week have been agitating the usual allowance, book allowance, car allowance. What exactly is their concern? And is the 1.5 million Ghana cities that the president or the government gave them going to let them sleep? We'll find out on this edition. So on Thursday, President Mahama, for close to four hours, delivered what he terms the State of the Nation address to Parliament. It was an evidence-based State of the Nation address that he addressed, trying to justify everything that he said he has done over the past four years. Some argue that the four year hours that he spent represent an hour each for the four years that he has spent. But does he even stand a chance of being re-elected in 2016 based on what he told us in Parliament on Thursday? Is a minority happy with what he has said or they are just, as usual, being opponents and so they are opposing everything he says? Sixtus Donulo of City News has been monitoring the address and joins me now. So, Sixtus, four hours. Was that too boring and lengthy for the people who were viewing, you think? Not really, depending on which side of the coin you are on. Uh, but for the first time in so many years, you know, following the State of the Nation addresses, you would realize that this particular one captured the attention of so many people, particularly the members of the minority who were in the, in the chamber at the time. Because uh, Mahama did not just present the usual state of the nation addresses that we, we are used to. He gave us what I will term a novelty, which the minority leader, Che Mensah Bonsu, is now uh, describing as a breach of the rules uh, of order of, of the house. Because he, he like you said, evidence-based, he was able to point to human beings, Ghanaians, uh, who benefited from a lot of the things that he, he stated. Okay. So let's talk about the things that he stated. He talked about roads, he talked about infrastructure across the country. Is that satisfying enough to clinch the NDC another victory in 2016? I mean, considering the argument from the opposition side. First of all, it's one thing talking about the things you have done on paper when you meet parliament, for instance, and it's another thing actually finding the, the, the project that he stated on the ground. And I think that is something that the media would have to do because time and again we have seen official sources or official reports that tell us that one, two, three projects have been executed, you go to the ground and it's a different thing altogether. But if what the president said is anything at all to go by, I think that the minority would have a lot of work to do to be able to, 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 to win the upcoming elections. If the president, the president's state of the nation address is anything to go by. Unless um, the minority groups from any of the political parties or the media is able to go between, uh, behind the state of the nation address to find out whether we actually have tangible projects on the ground, as he said he implemented. So on the thorny issue of energy, we know last year his address was dominated by Doomso. This time around, what was the delivery on that particular area like? Like you said, last year we were in the thick end of, uh, of Doomso. And so he appeared before Parliament to promise to fix Doomso. This year, according to the President, we have overcome Doomso. I'm, I'm just using his own words. We have overcome Doomso. But the question really is, like I, I talked initially about saying it on paper and what is actually happening on the ground. You know, and we have heard the deputy the power minister, Jinapur, saying that Mahama did not really say we have overcome uh, uh, doom. So. so it seemed to be contradictory. You know, the president said actually that we have overcome doom. So, so what we should be expecting now would be a permanent solution to the problem. But as it stands right now, we have overcome them, so. I'll be looking forward to next year and see if the same thing will be repeated or maybe this time around the parliamentarians would desist from singing, chanting and even bearing, uh, holding placards in the chamber. And that's Sixtus Don Ulo from City News with that analysis. <music> Let's, 
let's do some more politics and to the Klote Kwale constituency of the Greater Accra region. The NDC and the NPP both seem to have challenges with who their parliamentary candidate is. The NDC has elected Dr. Zaneto Ajiman Rollins to lead them, but that has since been challenged. The incumbent MP Niyama Ashite is challenging that in court and he has already got a first round victory sort of. And the MPP, that case has already been determined in court and they are having their primaries upcoming. What exactly is happening in Klote Kwale? Are they changing or they are retaining? What exactly is the case? But Fred Jabano is uh, from a political desk here at CTFM. He has been following the development in Klote Kwale. Welcome to Political. So Fred, what is the case with Zaneto first of all? Then we'll go to MPP. Yes, um, Sandra, let me say that um, the Kole, Kole Kote constituency um, is a very interesting one. In the NDC, they are still battling the issue out in court because um, the incumbent MP, Niamashite, is in court challenging the legitimacy of uh, the elected nominee for the party, Dr. Zanato, from con um, con from contesting that particular election. And this is by Niamashite and it's the other contender. Exactly. exactly. But yeah. he has since pulled out, right? The second contender. No, no they're, they're, they're still, they're still, they are both. Uh, in the case, they all filed the case together, and um, the issue is that they, according to them, the legitimacy of um, Dr. Zenato as a voter register, uh, I mean, as a registered member of a, uh, uh, of a party, is questionable. With the MPP, you have Nino Enote and Philip Addison. Nino Enote was elected as the MPP parliamentary candidate exactly. for the area. Exactly. You know, now he's been challenged. Yes, he's being challenged by Philip Addison. This okay. matter was sent to court. Um, the court gave a default judgment. The party, which is the MPP, came in, told the court that they wanted the court to settle the issue between the candidates. And tomorrow, Saturday, they are going to hold the election, a rerun of the election. Um, for the MPP uh, uh, case, what we are hearing is that the third person in the picture, Mia Jeteria, is going to withdraw from the contest and support Philip Addison uh, on Saturday's, in Saturday's election. Thank you very much, Fred Javan. And that's an exciting constituency that we definitely would ha have our eyes in, is the Clotty Collie constituency. It's exciting at, as always, because both NDC and MPP seem to be in a sort of confusion. What will happen by November 6th when we go to the polls? Who is going to represent either party? We'll find out. <music> Finally, this week, the teachers have been up in arms. They have been demanding a lot from government. Government has been denying them a lot. They've met twice. It was inconclusive. Finally, we hear the meeting came to a sort of a conclusion. There have been some deals. But that, does that even mean the 29th deadline that they've given government to withdraw their services? Has this been cancelled or they're going to stick by it? Kojo Ajiman is a man who's been following the concerns by the teacher unions. Welcome to Politicals. What is the concern of the teachers? The teachers are demanding from government their salary arrears, car maintenance allowances and incremental jump, which is also in arrears for three years. So government was able to strike a deal with them to pay 1.5 million Ghana cities of the 16 million Ghana cities that teachers are demanding from government. But then this doesn't mean that they are going to um, hold on to their strike for the 29th February deadline. They are saying that if government does not agree to whatever came up on the, in the meeting, they will still go on strike. Well, that's an issue we'll be following closely and see what the conclusion is going to be. Are the teachers going to embark on a strike as they planned or they're just going to listen to government? Maybe the 1.5 million would be enough to entice them to stay a little longer in the classroom. Well, that's how we end this edition of Politicals on City TV. I am Umaru Sanda Amadu. Stay with us. Next week, we'll be back.